Hello. My name is Christopher Moonlight, and welcome to my live stream. Today, I'm talking about this strange man, and this, this here, this rather strange and often obnoxious man. Uh, sorry. <laughs> if you like Kevin Smith, you know, I mean, I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think he's gone astray. And uh, same with Alan Moore. So the two of them had kind of individual comments about the industry. One more about the movie industry and one about the comic book industry. As you can see from the headline here, Watchmen creator Alan Moore says adults who enjoy superhero media are engaging in a kind of infantilization that can very often be a precursor to fascism. Um, I know that's going to create a lot of ire, and it seems like it's designed to create ire. It seems like very uh, bitter and resentful rhetoric from someone who, yeah, was uh, wronged by the comic book industry, attacked by people within the comic book industry. And, uh, you know, some of it has to do, in the early days, his gripes with the comic book industry, I think just generally, and this is my opinion, stem from the fact that he's not a very good businessman. Um, he was regretful about some of the contracts that he signed, but he did sign them, and I assume he read them before he signed them. So, you know, it's a business and people are in it to make money. So, uh, but anyway, so that's the first statement. And then Kevin Smith says trying to direct a Marvel or Star Wars movie is a fool's errand. So in both these instances, there were parts of what these people said that I kind of agree with. Um, I do think that at this point in time, directing a Marvel or Star Wars movie is definitely a fool's errand. But Kevin Smith then goes on to give his reasons, which to me are uh, very tone deaf, uh, absolving himself of any accountability for the way that he's behaved or the actions that he's taken. Um, and same with Alan Moore. Again, uh, I like Alan Moore. I like his writing. I've enjoyed his comics for many years. I, I do think he deserves all the praise he gets for his talent as a writer, um, especially when it comes to doing what I certainly believe in for the, foremost is pushing the medium, finding a medium that you love and really seeing how you can push it in ways that express a story uh, that can't be told any other way. That's why he, you know, decided that Watchmen was unfilmable. And even though they did make, I think, a rather good Watchmen movie, I do understand why it doesn't quite land as well as uh, the Watchmen comic book. But uh, yeah, the second part of this statement, uh, very often be a precursor to fascism. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. Let's start with Kevin Smith, though, because Kevin Smith is kind of the low hanging fruit. And again, I'm sorry if you're a Kevin Smith fan. I never have been. I, I don't, um, you know, I mean, he's gotten a few laughs out of me, but I haven't been able to sit through his movies. Uh, it, it, they never hold my attention. It's just not my thing. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, and he likes doing interviews and talking and crying on camera for a long time. He's been a shill for both Marvel and star Wars and that sort of thing, which is kind of funny because he kind of got to start making fun of this stuff. Then he went and became a shill did a lot of stuff crying on camera. I think maybe his crash dieting messed with his, with his testosterone or something like that. But uh, here's the statement, which is uh, it's asked if he would like to helm an MCU or star Wars project, which by the way, nobody's asking him to do at least I'm sure he's got fans that would like to see it, but nobody that has any say so is asking him to do. Um, so yeah, in a Q and a for the guardian Smith 
decisively responds, no, it's a fool's errand. You're going to piss everybody off. Fandom is rabid and tribal. When I worked on Masters of the Universe, I took a lot of heat from people who felt like I had ruined their childhood. Going near a Marvel or a Star Wars uh, would make me insane, uh, insanely reticent. I've got a billion people to make, they've got a billion people to make those movies, but nobody's making Kevin Smith movies, so I might as well make them. Um, I mean, yes, you might as well make them, and uh, I agree that you should. I think that everybody should think more about making their own properties um, and staying true to that. But the fact is, that's not what you wanted to do, is it? I think for a long time, you did want to do these things. And then you worked on Masters of the Universe. Now, I don't care about Masters of the Universe. I haven't since I was a little kid. I used to love watching uh, after school Masters of the Universe, which I just called He-Man uh, and She-Ra. And it was kind of <laughs> it was kind of a thing. I was only allowed to watch two shows after school a day and but my parents didn't quite catch on that he-man and shira were two different shows so you know they look the same and the characters look the same uh so i got away with that which is a fond little memory but yeah master of the universe just not my thing as an adult uh i have no interest in it it seems silly to me i have kind of gone back and watched clips of old episodes and went wow you know this Definitely, I'm not the audience for this. Um, and it seems to operate on a level that only a little kid can really appreciate. Uh, which may go, you know, to Alan Moore's comment about infantilization. Because this is something that I do want to talk about. Um, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Back to Kevin Smith's con uh, comments. So here's the thing about it. Again, Kevin... Not that you're ever going to listen to this, but, you know, just in case people do want to like you. This is something that I think you kind of, I don't know, not factored in. People like your work. The people who are fans of these things are fans of your work. They liked Clerks. They liked Mall Rats. They liked Jay and Silent Bob. They liked Dogma. Um, you have fans who appreciate your humor and what you do, and they want to see you be successful. They like tuning in on your shows where you interview people and hung out with Stan Lee and, and uh, Ben Affleck and all these people and uh, cursed and had fun. And, uh, you know, they do really like you. This here is... This comment about when you worked on Masters of the Universe, you know what you did. You decided that you were going to take something that people loved and you were going to, instead of catering to the fan base, instead of taking what was uh, good about the original show or, you know, and again, good is subjective in terms of, like I said, I said, I'm not interested in Masters of the Universe, but there are a lot of people who are. Now, that means that there are people out there that something about that resonated with. You decided to take those things and ignore them and do your own thing, do this crazy, weird thing uh, and and be dishonest about it because it leaked what you were doing. And if you would have said, and I, th I believe it was Clownfish TV, which I know you're also not a fan of, uh, you know, they made this suggestion the other day, which is to say, if you would have just said to the people, hey, we want to do a story about what, what would the world of Masters of the Universe be like if Adam wasn't there to protect it anymore? People might have said, oh, that's, that's an interesting idea. Um, you know, let's see what this is all about and executed it in a good way, you may have been successful for it. But instead, you decided to lie about it. And then you decided to do what Alan Moore is doing and say this. Uh, you're always going to, you're going to piss somebody off. Well, guess what? If you're in the entertainment industry, yes, there are always going to be people who are unhappy with the choices you make. The key to that is to make choices based on, you know, if you're working in a franchise, 
nail down what the values of that franchise are. What is it that they are expecting? And work within that rather than just going and doing your own thing. And this is the problem that I have with a lot, pretty much all of modern uh, incarnations of decades old franchises is instead of doing that, instead of catering to the values that they're based on, the, the foundations that uh, they're built upon and expanding on that or doing something within that, they decide to just hijack it and make it all about them, which is what you did. Uh, fandom is rabid and tribal. I think this is projection. Um, Hollywood is rabid and tribal. Fandom just wants to see the things that they are uh, in that they love, that they gravitated towards originally because of the values. Um, and, uh, and, and see new stories told around that and hail Martin, Martin, you're my favorite. Uh, how you doing today? Uh, it's good to hear from you. Uh, Martin helps me out, uh, when I am, he, he, he more than helps me out. He is my foundation that I'm built on when I am hosting on Tuesdays, uh, morning coffee on pop culture minefield and Honestly, where would pop culture minefield be without Martin? Uh, he is the man behind the scenes that makes it all happen. Uh, so shout out to Martin. Um, anyway, uh, let's see, where was I? So yeah, so this is this is the thing. This is the cry bully thing where you go and then you you say you uh, you know it's like the kid that comes in and, and goes like I want to play with the with you and your toys. And you were suspicious already. You're like, hey, I've played with you in the past and you broke my toys. Uh, and then the parent comes in and goes, oh, he just wants to play. Kind of let him play. And then what does he do? He breaks the toys. So you get upset and he gets upset and he acts like uh, not playing with me nicely. And, you know, they go and deliberately break all the toys and then go, what? I don't get it. What's the problem? You know, you're uh, you're you're being too sensitive about it or or you're being too infantile, which brings me to, good segue, Alan Moore. So infantilization. Um, I think he met fundamentally misunderstands why people like superheroes. Um, you know, this idea that, um, let's see. Where is the quote here? Beautiful artwork by Dave Gibbons. So uh, I haven't written, let's see. Good riddance to the industry before turning to assure uh, the Guardians, Liam Smith. I'm definitely done with comics. I haven't written one uh, one for getting on for five years, he added. I will always love and adore the comics medium, but the comics industry and all the stuff attached to it just became unbearable. Um, let's see. Let's find the other quote. Uh well, let me address that for a moment. So unbearable. Alan Moore was attacked mercilessly um, by the Mean Girls group, opinion statement, the Mean Girls group, <laughs> that was on Comics Beat. And I remember this very well. Um, they really kind of went after him and he got into a feud with them. Uh and that was kind of the precursor to what went wrong with comics was all these people that kind of came in and started taking over, taking over the, the comics reporting and taking over the comics medium and just uh, doing all this kind of cancellation stuff. And Alan Moore was a part of it. Um, and somehow he managed to ignore that this was very much uh, efforts from the kind of like proto me too type, um, mean girls, like girl power, uh, feminist types who wanted to come in and, and, uh, talk about how everything was misogyny and, and how they were, it, it's just, you know, it, I remember seeing it happen in me in real time. And, uh, 
Alan Moore was mad about it. He wrote a, a, a scathing letter about it on, uh, I think it was a lot of people referred to it as his Christmas morning letter. I should have uh, brought that up. But um, anyway, I, I remember kind of weighing in on, on it at the time uh, in the comics beat comment section uh, before I realized what was going on and getting attacked for it as well. You know, just being told, you know, that, uh, you know, I'm obviously sexist and and uh, all this stuff. And I'm like, no, it's, this is just, you know, why are you attacking one of our great creators? And uh, so Alan Moore, I think it was one of the things that drove him out of the comic book industry. He kind of wrapped up all his stuff, uh, finished up League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and uh, and left. Now he's saying, I really think that superheroes were adult. Uh, I I didn't really think that superheroes were adult fair, continued uh, the From Hell creator. I think that this was a misunderstanding born of what happened in the 1980s, to which I must put my hand up to a considerable share of the blame, though it was not intentional when things like Watchmen were first appearing. Um, he says there was an awful lot of headline saying comics have grown up he recalled i tend to think that no comics hadn't grown up there are a few titles that were more adult than people were used to but the majority of comics titles were pretty much the same as they'd been um he's kind of changing his tune here I'll, I'll talk about why in a moment it wasn't comics growing up uh opined more i think it was more comics meeting the emotional age of the audience coming the other way um okay so you know Again, there's comments here about superheroes. Uh, let me see here. Um, I said around about 2011 that I thought that it had serious and worrying implications for the future of millions of adults who were queuing up to see Batman movies, uh, stated more, because that kind of infantilization, that urge towards simple, simpler times, simply simpler realities, that can very often be uh, precursors to fascism. So, God, this this really is just ridiculous to me. Let's start with people queuing up to see Batman movies, all right? People were queuing up with their families. People were queuing up with their children to see Batman because I know this is an odd thing to think, but family entertainment is a thing. There's kids entertainment and there's adult oriented entertainment, you know, rated R movies and that sort of thing. And um, there are, you know, times where the family wants to go out together uh, and enjoy something together. And I think that's what the excitement for superhero movies in general and uh, Star Wars, science fiction, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, you know, at times there are creators who do want to, like Alan Moore did, um, go and explore, like, you know, what, what if these situations had more, uh, adult themes applied to them? Or what if, um, there is a more satirical slant on them again, like Alan Moore has done and other comic creators have, um, so that adults can go and enjoy them on that level. Uh, and then there are the more, you know, lighthearted, like, you know, Batman 66 or, um, you know, uh, more kid oriented stuff like, I don't know, Crypto, the super dog movie that came out not too long ago. You know, it's all just different forms of entertainment, just like the Western was or the science fiction movie. It's just ways to kind of escape and uh, explore ideas. Some of those ideas, again, are rooted in values and people are attracted to them because of those values. Star Wars is very much a hero's journey. Uh, you know, the Marvel comics, all that is, um, what does it mean to be a hero? What does it mean to um, take some pride in your society, to stand up for the values of your society? To Alan Moore, that's fascism. Fascism is essentially, you know, it, it, he sees fascism in his breakfast cereal in the morning if he eats breakfast cereal, maybe in his toast or his morning tea or something like that. Um, you know, any kind of sentiment of community 
or um, or value in, in or pride in country is fascism to him. I'm going to tell you exactly what fascism is right now, because the general real definition gets ignored. Uh, fascism is uh, actually it was born out of France. It came from the, the French intellectuals, I believe, post revolutionary. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was it kind of was a mix of the people who were, you know, coming up with different versions of socialism and communism. And fascism was essentially the idea that everything for the state, everything within the state, which is different than patriotism. Like American patriotism is just, we love our country. We love our constitution and we love the values held within it. We love the values of, of freedom of expression, the right to uh, property, the right to protect yourself. These things are how you attain a certain degree of autonomy in an otherwise um, uh, communal society where everybody has a different role that they play in maintaining that society, but everybody gets to choose it and everybody gets to debate on what they think is best. Fascism is essentially a merging of government with uh, industry and, um, you know, everything with uh, and media. So in Nazi Germany, the Nazis uh, or the Yahtzees, I think I get deplatformed for saying it, but... Uh, the <laughs> that particular political group controlled all media and controlled all business. You needed the approval of the government to do business, and your business was for the government. Now, how's that different than communism? Actually, not much, really, because it all comes down to the same thing. It comes down to a dictatorship. Um, there's really, you know, national socialism, fascism communism, it all kind of boils down to the same thing, no matter how you uh, try and present it, you know, with socialism, it's, you know, essentially, like, everybody gets equal shares of everything. Um, and uh, everyone gets one vote, you know, to, in, in one say so and everything, everything belongs to the collective people. Well, ultimately, you need a, a dictator to sort that out. Um, you know, and then the same with fascism. Alan Moore has worn communist paraphernalia in the past. He says he's an anarchist, but he's essentially um, a, uh, you know, it, it, it again boils down to the same thing. Anarchy is uh, no rule of law, which when you really think about it for 10 seconds, we, we're already seeing the results of that. So it really boils down to this, you know, uh, I have a saying, if a, uh, uh, <laughs> if a, uh, a, a weed addled, uh, communist comic book writer who has forsaken his talent to degenerate into writing porn fanfic Victorian era, uh, and thinks he's a wizard doesn't call you a fascist and or misogynist, then what are you even doing with your life? Um, you know, this is, how can you reason with these people if all they see, everything that they see is just fascism? He doesn't say how it's fashion, fascism, uh, aside from the fact that a little bit of, um, you know, pride in country and, and uh, value in, in heroism uh, somehow equals fascism. Uh, the same thing happened with, um, oh, I'm blocking on his name, that directed Robocop and Starship Troopers. Uh, brilliant director, um, makes great films. Um, I can't think of it at the moment, but the same thing, you know, he, he kind of just sees, you know, <laughs> any kind of stern sounding, speech with any kind of resolve is fascism, but they don't, they can't actually define it other than, oh, it's right wing. Um, you know, so, and again, <laughs> uh, ideas are bulletproof. Yeah. Um, you know, Paul Verhoeven, thank you very much. Uh, Martin, I appreciate that. 
Uh, yes, Paul Verhoeven, who Starship Troopers, again, he said it's it's supposed to represent fascism. But when you actually look at Starship Troopers, it's, you know, <laughs> they're elected officials. If someone screws up, they resign. Um, fascist dictators don't resign when they screw up. You see people arguing on TV, disagreeing with each other. You would never see that in a fascist government. So, again, this just a um, a very... Uh, a very poor understanding of what fascism is to begin with. I think they just see it as, uh, you know, people speaking sternly and, and uh, having families and, <laughs> and not uh, behaving in the ways that uh, Alan Moore depicts in the lost girls, which if you've ever read the lost girls and I have, Oh boy, it's not even a very well-written work. It's like he's just trying to be offensive, but um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I I do think though I want to come back to infantilization. There is a certain degree of it these days that concerns me, and I've made videos about that as well. I made a video a while ago called "How to Be a Fan Without Infantilizing Yourself." Um, I uh, I really. Um, I really do have some concerns uh, how deep into pop culture we sometimes dive. Now, if you're a live streamer or you're a creator who wants to critique, um, I think that's perfectly valid. I think, you know, um, for example, what we do on Pop Culture Minefield is we just want to see entertainment get better. So we review things, we critique it, we don't always agree with each other, which again, isn't really fascism. If Fascism is when everybody you know, is forced to agree uh, and walk in lockstep, which is what the people who initially attacked Alan Moore uh, did, these kind of more uh, far left oriented people who uh, just lambasted him. You know, they they went, he was actually one of the, the first people that cancer culture, cancel culture really went after. So the fact that Alan Moore has kind of turned a blind eye to that and just decided, oh, the comic book industry is is just riddled with fascists. He really isn't <laughs> paying attention to the uh, the mainstream of comic books. Uh, the people who he views as fascists have walked away from this stuff. They've started creating their own. And maybe that's threatening to him. Uh, another thing about Alan Moore as well, which Kevin Smith does not have the same excuse for, is that um, he doesn't have a computer. He doesn't surf the internet. Uh, and when you hear him talk about the internet, he has very kind of narrow, reductive views of what the internet is. Uh, and he has a person who goes online for him and then just kind of like posts stuff for him and then reports back. Well, everything is coming through the lens of that person. And who is that person? We don't know. Most likely uh, someone very much a sycophant, uh, probably someone who's also far left leaning, who sees fascists everywhere they look like some sort of paranoid lunatic. Um, so they're perfectly willing to tell Alan Moore everything, you know, just Alan Moore's in his own bubble, he's regurgitating uh, what, or he's having what he's saying um, kind of confirmed uh, through other people. It's being regurgitated back to him. And they're going and seeking things on the internet that just support his confirmation bias. Um, you know, he's a boomer. He's, uh, you know, he, and even back in the day, there were a lot of things that I didn't agree, you know. Oh, one more thing I want to kind of cover really quick is the topic of Rorschach, how he, you know, this is how he views a right winger. Artists are always the worst people to ask about their work. They uh, often miss, and this is why I don't try and have uh, control over my own work to the degree that I'm going to tell you what it's about. Um, I, you know, I have my reasons for making the choices that I make in my stories and then I leave it up, but I want to leave it up to the audience to interpret. He's saying that this is like some right wing fascist nut job. But what do we see from Rorschach? And what does it say about Alan Moore's values that he sees what Rorschach does as inherently bad? Well, we see Rorschach 
um, use facts and draw conclusions and follow leads. We see him be loyal to his friends, even with his friends don't treat him very well. When he doesn't treat his friends well uh, and they snap back at him for it, he apologizes. He tells you that he tells them that he understands how they feel and that he values them and that he's grateful for them. Um, you know, these are he, he's definitely a flawed character, but he also is someone who shows a lot of character. And uh, and somehow that doesn't seem like uh, something that he expects anybody to relate to or anybody wanting to emulate. Um, he just sees, you know, Alan, he just sees these things that he does that are kind of crazy. You know, what does he do? He doesn't bathe. He's smelly. Um, well, these are these are kind of projections from Alan Moore. He's, he sees, uh, you know, he's, he's, um, brutal against criminals that in his mind have more of a gray area. Uh, you know, he says that it's not black and white, it's gray area. And he sees right wingers as seeing everything in black and white. Well, maybe the truth is kind of in between that, but anyway, uh, I could go on about that. I'm not going to, I'm just kind of shooting from the hip here. Um, but I, Alan Moore, I think is, is in his own bubble. He's completely lost touch. Uh, he's having, you know, like I said, when you, when you're having just your own values constantly regurgitated back at you without really wanting to hear from anyone else and assuming that what goes on in the internet is exactly as you imagine it, you know, your, um, your returns on your, your, uh, value judgments uh, your assessments are, are going to diminish with Kevin Smith. Again, I think he has even less of an excuse though. He knows exactly what he's doing. Um, he refuses to take on any accountability for his own actions. It's all everyone else's fault that nobody likes him. Um, and that everyone's mean to him when in fact it's, you know, if he would have just stuck to his values to begin with, if he would have stuck to what he was doing to begin with, um, and not try to sell out to these companies only to have them reject them and, uh, and to completely spit on the fans of projects that he really doesn't even care about. And he's made clear he doesn't care about, um, you know, that's back on him, but I do agree. It's a fool's errand. If I was offered a star Wars or Marvel movie at this point, you know, <sighs> That money would be really tempting. It would, but it would have to be a large amount of money and it would have to be with creative control and it'd have to be with some sort of promise that I wasn't going to get thrown under the bus, like say Gina Carano did, or they almost did to Rosario Dawson. Uh, and that seems to be the MO of Disney, especially when it comes to Star Wars, but Marvel as well. Um, you know, yeah, there could be some good money and yeah, it's an opportunity to dabble in you know, a universe that is fun and that families go to enjoy together. Uh, but the people that have say so over you are, have completely abandoned that idea that it's family entertainment, um, that it should be based in the values it was founded on, um, or they were founded on and they want to do exactly what Kevin Smith tried to do, which is kind of undo everything, rewrite history in this weird Orwellian way have you reject everything that came before and only focus on what they've created? It's this kind of narcissistic thing where they want to just destroy everything and make sure that everything else is only what they created so they can make it all about them. They have stolen the value valor of the brand and, uh, and told the fans to piss off. And then they act shocked that people are upset. These stories did matter to us. Um, and they still do matter to us. And I think to a certain degree, they will always endure, um, beyond what these people do. I think a lot of what these people have done will be forgotten. And what will remain is what originally came to be, uh, what people were originally attracted to. And I think that there will be a renaissance. Um, I don't know if it'll be a renaissance of these franchises, but they'll always, you know, be seen as classics, things to look at and uh, and uh, be 
revered and 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 loved uh and everything else will be forgotten i mean think just think back to you know some of the stuff that even lucas did you know the ewok adventure in this holiday special and that sort of thing he knew well enough to just let that kind of fall down the memory holes and and that the things of real value would endure uh so i think i'm just going to wrap it up there uh martin thanks for tuning in and uh i don't know if anybody else is watching live sometimes the counter isn't correct but um i know that uh people always tune in after so i appreciate that oh what i should have done at the beginning is say i have a subscribe star now um escape from planet omega 12 uh, which I had a, a crowd funder for, and uh, well, I still do have a crowd funder for, but I am going to close it out. It's uh, not nearly near its goal, but there were some people that wanted to support it, so I'm leaving open the subscribe star option for them. I'm actually going to go record another video soon um, for that subscribe star. So there's a couple of tiers, uh, I think, because this is my account, this is where I will put the video. Um, I just opened it, so no one's giving to it yet. But uh, you can see it's subscribestar.com slash Christopher Moonlight. I am Christopher Moonlight. And I want to say thank you for tuning into this live stream, whether you did live, Martin, or uh, whether you are watching afterward. So let me know what you think in the comments. Um, you know, this live stream, <laughs> I'll do a bunch of these and I, and I, hopefully I'll get better at them. I usually do better when I invite somebody in or when I'm on somebody else's live stream, uh, shooting from the hip on my own is a little difficult, but I hope I do get better at it. Um, mainly I want to keep doing this to just keep boosting my, uh, YouTube numbers, you know, get that algorithm going. Uh, so anyway, be sure to, I'll leave a link in the description uh, to my link tree, which will link to the subscribe star as well as other social media. So please follow me there. Um, again, thanks for tuning in. My name is Christopher Moonlight and I thank you. And I'll be back with more opinions, uh, mostly in the positive. I don't want to harp on these people, but you know, it's, it's time to kind of distance ourselves from this. Again, I love Alan Moore. I'm fine with Kevin Smith. I'm, uh, you know, I want to see them do well. I don't hold any ill will against either of them. I just wish they would let go of some of their ire, some of their bitterness and resentfulness. It's not serving them. It's not serving the audience. And it's just driving more divides. Uh, if you're really concerned about uh, people grouping off into little fascist pockets or whatever. Um, you're not going to help the situation by just telling them that they're fascist and to, you know, that everything they like is stupid. Reach out for them. Do what others are doing, like in the Iron Age, which is create better content. Alan Moore, I know you're capable of it. Kevin Smith, you're capable of it too in your own way. And I think actually that's better, you know, do it in your own way. Alan Moore, like just, you're not a wizard. I understand your, your theories and your fascination with magic and how you use the, the vocabulary of it for your writing. And that's great, but, uh, you really haven't gotten any better. It's, it's gotten worse. And, uh, which is a shame because you are one of the great writers of our time. Um, and uh, maybe get out, talk to some people that uh, don't always unilaterally agree with you and nod their heads when you uh, say your weird stuff. Um, all right. Again, my name is Christopher Moonlight. This is the end of my live stream. Thank you very much. I'll be back.